Hi, this is David Farrell with another video on electronic music and Max MSP. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to create some simple harmony using MIDI data. I've got a patch here that's very similar to the patch I built in my previous video. You can see a bunch of the components from the bottom uh, up to the top. It's got that make note note out pair at the bottom that'll send MIDI data out to my instrument in Ableton. I've got uh, some number objects to set the duration, the velocity, and the pitch value uh, to my make note. And I've also got some different ways I can trigger that value. I've got a bang here. And I've got a metronome as well that'll send a bunch of bangs uh, so that I can have repeated pitches. This is a pretty simple construct. I'd like to build on top of it a little bit more. And so I'm going to show some simple ways that we can use some more objects in Max to create different kinds of harmonic structures and uh, using MIDI data as the core of what we're doing. We know that MIDI just uses numbers to create all the different musical details uh, and all the different instruments and softwares that it works with. And so we're going to be taking advantage of that in Max by uh, using numbers to help us create harmony. And so what I want to do is use uh, some simple mathematics to create some harmony, to create different pitch numbers based on my original pitch value. To do that, I'm going to press N to make a new Max object, and then I'm going to create the plus object. You can see uh, Max, as always, will tell me what plus does. It says plus will add two numbers and output the result. I'm going to add a space after that and enter the number 5. Uh, MIDI values are always in semitones, and so five semitones will create a perfect fourth for us. Like every Max object, we can select it and go to Max Help and take a look, and it'll tell us all about how plus works. What happens when we send a number into the left inlet? Well, it'll set the left part of this equation, and then it'll trigger the output, right? So if I send a number into the left side of number, uh, it's going to add it to whatever argument we put in, and then give us the output. You can see I added a 42 here, it added a 5, and outputted a 47. As always, max help is great, and it works. So I'm, I have this plus 5. I'm going to drag a, pitch, a patch chord from the outlet of my pitch number here, my 60, into the inlet of plus. When this number is sent, then when I trigger this 60, either with a bang or with metro, it's going to send that 60 value through the patch and into plus. From there, I can take the result of my operation and take it out here, and I'm just going to drag it into the same make note. What this means now is that when I trigger when I trigger this number, this 60, it's going to be sent to two places. It'll be sent down to make note initially, and it'll also be sent through plus. And so it'll send not just the pitch 60, but 65, a perfect fourth above. That'll give me harmony. There we go, a perfect fourth, a lovely perfect fourth. And I can sort of stack up these intervals to create different harmonic results. I'll add a plus 10 as well, which will give me a different interval, uh, a minor seventh. And I can create another one. How about plus 14? That'll give me a major nine. Just give me a couple of options for different harmonies here. Again, every time I trigger this number, it's going to be sent into plus. Notice that I've, draft, I've dragged my patch chord into the left inlet of all of these pluses. And then each of the outlets feed into make note. So make note is going to get all the information, four different pitch values. I don't need a separate make note for each of these pluses. I get a lovely harmony right there, really lovely chord. Very simple way to create harmony using Max MSP. So using this plus gives me a pretty easy solution towards creating harmony sort of in a quick way. If I turn on my metronome, I can uh, get these chords that repeat. Very nice, very fine. But I'm a little bit tired of it already. Uh, when I create a digital instrument, I typically like to have some options uh, that I can work with. And this instrument right now isn't giving me a lot of options. So what I'd like to do is to be able to control which of these different harmonizing intervals I use at a given time. And to do that, I'm going to use a new Max object called Gate. What Gate does uh, for us here is allows us to sometimes let information pass through and sometimes 
to let to block off that information to stop it from passing through it's going to be perfect for what i'm doing here and so let's take a quick look at the inlets and outlets of gate and if we wanted more of course we could go to gate help gate has an inlet on the left that says that controls whether or not the information will be allowed to pass through zero a message of zero will close the gate a non-zero message will open the gate the information that is or isn't allowed through needs to go through the right inlet. It says incoming gated messages here. And finally, the output comes through here. And Max will tell me right now my gate is closed. So rather than just sending my number immediately into plus, what I'm going to do is send it through this gate. I'll send it through gate's right inlet, and then I'll send the output of gate into my plus five, my plus object down here. To control whether or not the gate's open, I also need to send some data into gate's inlet. Again, gate will tell me that a zero will close the gate and a non-zero will open the gate outlet. So I'm going to create two messages. One will be a zero, that's going to tell gate to close, and one will be something else, I'll use a one, that'll tell the gate to open. And just to make sure things are working correctly, I'm going to make a bang to see if inf what information is getting through my gate. Let's take a look and see what happens. We've got our initial sound here, but the gate is currently closed. It's not letting any of the plus five information go through. I'm going to send a non-zero message. And now we see the bang lighting up and we hear the harmonization. Now I'm, the gate is open and I get my harmony. I can manipulate my instrument by opening and closing this gate. Close when I press a zero open when I press a 1. Gate is a pretty useful thing to do, and I'm going to just clean up my interface a little bit so that I can work with my gate a little bit more easily. I'm going to delete this 0 and 1, and instead I'm going to use something called Radio Group. Radio Group is an object in Max that is a user interface object. It's just a neater way for me to send information along uh, into my objects. Radio Group, you can see once I hit enter, stopped saying the word Radio Group and turned into these two buttons. And what these buttons do is actually just output the same information I was sending. They send out zeros and ones. You can see I drag them into a message group here, and you can see when I click the different settings on Radio Group, it sends a zero and a one out. This lets me use Radio Group to open and close my gate so that I can allow my harmony to go through a little bit more neatly into my plus five. So I've got two settings on Radio Group here. One of them will open up my gate, one of them will close my gate. I'm going to route my patch cords really quick to clean up my patch, and then what I'm going to do is copy this for my other harmonies. I love copying and pasting in Max duplicating things. Uh, sometimes it just takes a lot of clicking to remake everything over and over again. And so if I've already made an object and I want more versions of it, I'm always in the mood to just copy and paste rather than sort of redo everything again. And I'm going to drag these all to the same places and I'll route my patch cords so things look reasonably neat. Uh, with Radio Group, I always forget which version is on and which version is off, and so uh, I like to add some comments to those as well, just to help me remember uh, which button does what for me. Right? Uh, we talked about it in the last video. Comments are super useful because they remind you how to use your patch here. Let's see if I'm correct. If the top button is on, I've already forgotten. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll click it off and on. I got it wrong. I bet it's the other way. There it is. Okay, and so I can open up these different buttons. And that'll control which parts of my harmony are allowed through. Clean up my comments here. 
so that I know the lower button is on and the top button is off. No patch cords, please. And I'll copy and paste those so that I've got them over here. And now I've taken something that was a, a relatively static instrument, right? Something that could just only play the same harmony over and over again. And now I've created something that I can sort of work with a little bit more easily. I can change the timings, of course, on Metro and do other things. And I can also change what members of my chord are present. Pretty fun, pretty cool. So I started with a simple uh, pitch maker. I added some pluses so that I could create harmonies. I added some gates so I could alter those harmonies, so I could change the harmonies. I'm getting close to something that I kind of like here, but now what I want to do is uh, a little bit less work for me, right? Uh, I get really tired of clicking on all these gates on and off. It's a little bit awkward. I'd rather have Max do some of that work. I've got a computer here that can do some work for me. And so I'm going to add an extra feature using uh, my favorite object in Max MSP. And that object is random. Okay, Random generates a random number. Random takes an argument. The argument gives you the range of the random numbers. And max always starts with zero. So if I say two, it's going to give me an out, it's going to output a random number, and it's going to output between a zero or one, right? It's that, those are my two options for random two. If I said random five, it would go between zero and four. If I said random nine, it would co go between zero and eight. It always starts with zero because computers, right? And every time I bang random, it's going to output a different value, a zero or one. And you can see, of course, randomness. I got a whole bunch of zeros before one, right? We expect it to alternate because humans are bad at understanding randomness. But this is what random does. And of course, zero and one are going to be useful outputs for me because zero and one are also the controllers that open and close my gate. And so I'm going to patch my output, my outlet from random, my zeros and ones into the gate here that controls my interval of a perfect fourth. And every time I get a different zero or one, it will turn on and off the different harmony we've got going on there. This is going to be really nice because it's going to give me a variety of harmonies without having to do all the work of, uh, of, t of clicking everything on and off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my the metro that cues my initial pitches and I'm going to drag it over here into this bang of random so that every time one of my pitches is played it's also going to bang this random and send a random on or off to my gate. And I am also going to get rid of this little message now that we know how random works and of course copy those for my other harmonizers. What I've got now is something that will give me a variety of different harmonies inside the little world of perfect fourth, uh, minor seven, and uh, minor or major nine inside of this route my patch chords, make it look reasonable. Let's see what happens now when we turn on our metronome. Every bang of metro triggers a random. Every random will randomly open or close the gate that allows these harmonizations to exist. What happens then is that we get a wide range of harmonic possibilities, even just within the small number of intervals that we've got here. This lets me have a little bit more diversity, a little bit more of an interesting instrument here than uh, the simple version that always plays the same chord over and over again. Let's add one more feature to this digital instrument that allows us as humans to interact with it in a more meaningful way. I want to be able to change my initial pitch a little bit more easily, and uh, right now the only way I can do that is by typing in numbers, and I, I don't really like to do that very often. Uh, my MIDI number to actual note conversion is not the fastest thing in the world, so I'm going to create an object called K slider. K slider will tell you what it does, and of course we could go to Max Help if we wanted more information. It outputs numbers from an on-screen keyboard, and when I hit enter we see the type of keyboard about which we're speaking. Uh, it's a musical keyboard here. I can take my K slider and I can look at the output of it. It says it outputs a key value changed or received. So when I press a button, uh, a key on this 
picture of a keyboard here, it's going to send the MIDI pitch number uh, out of this outlet. I'm going to send that to my pitch number over here, and I'm going to add one extra little guy here. I'm going to add a prepend set here. Prepend adds the word set before the message, and what that's going to do is set the number of this uh, number box without actually outputting it through everything. So when I press a button here, it won't actually play the pitch. It won't actually send it out of the number box. It's just going to set it there. I'm going to let Metro play my pitches for me. Okay, And we can see when I press a key value, the pitch value in the number box changes. I've got an instrument here now that can do a couple of different things for me, right? I can set my metro to play pitches, and I've slowed it down a little bit so that I will have a chance to listen a little bit more. Metro will also bang all of these randoms, which will open or close the gates that allow the numbers uh, to pass through and create all these different harmonizations above. All of those pitches are being sent out to make note, and I can change my root of all my harmony, the number that sort of generates all these, by using K slider here to send the right information. Let's think about, uh, let's think about it and let's see what sorts of things uh, we can hear. I guess no more thinking. Let's listen to it. Okay. You see we get a wide range of different sounds here, different harmonies. Some of them, four note sort of rich chords. Some of them, when all the gates closed, just a single pitch. I can manipulate the roots, and so I sort of moved around in a kind of modal B tonal center here that suits all the different intervals I've got there. But of course, uh, we can move however we want here. And when I'm finished, I can turn off Metro and be done with it. That's all for today's video. So, what did we do today? In this video, we built off of our initial patch, our initial data routing patch, and we introduced a couple of things. We introduced the plus object, which we can use to do mathematical operations with MIDI values. With pitch, this allows us to create harmony. We used the gate object. The gate object can open and close those data paths and that allows us to have a little bit more variance in terms of what's going to happen rather than allowing the same data to keep flowing and the same sound to keep flowing gate allows us to sort of turn on and off the streams of information we also used random to create random numbers in this case random open and close open random controls are gates Random allows those gates to sort of open and close to give us a variety of different harmonies in our piece. And finally, we use K slider and radio group. K slider, the big keyboard controller at the top, radio group, these little buttons, these are user interface objects. These are objects that make it easier for me to use my Max instrument. When I'm spending all the time building these things to create cool sounds, uh, I want to be able to sort of interact with them in a useful and easy and meaningful way, or if I share them with other people, I want other people to figure out how they work pretty easily. And so these interface objects are pretty great. That's all for today. Simple Harmony with MIDI data. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.